Hey, this is Shelly15. Welcome to the eighth part of my tutorial series on how to animate with sprites. Now, check this out. Yahoo! So, last time we created this jump. Uh, let me just quickly turn the other R out. So, you can see we made this jump. And the only thing I did in this case was just multi copy it, paste it uh, several times. And here we go, that's the kind of jump. It's not very difficult to make, looks funny. Anywho, so last time we created this kind of jump using complex motion tweens and I'm gonna now in this video expand on that and show you two things that you can add to any kind of movement to make it look a little bit uh, a little bit more realistic and make it look smoother. So here we go. I'm going to use different sprites to present this. So first off I'm just gonna show you what sprites I'm using. So I have this typical green hill zone foreground just as a support. And in the character is going to be Sonic, of course, and I've got two sprites. Now, the first one is the one where Sonic is in the air. Very simple animation. And the second one is the one where Sonic is going to... This is the landing position of Sonic. So if we go inside the graphic, you can see I've got a few sprites. Now, this first one is when he lands, and then he gets up, and that's where he stands. And that's where we want to be at the end of the animation. In the first scenario, we're just gonna make Sonic fall and land on the ground. It's very simple animation and for that I'm going to use a classic tween. So just gonna select Sonic and create a second keyframe on which he's going to be landing on the ground. So he's gonna be... I'm gonna put him very close to the ground. Not too close though. Close enough. There we go. Create the classic tween. I'm just gonna add a certain ease now let's say minus 70 should be okay so it's going to speed up at the end and it should leak okay there we go there we go Sonic is landing on the ground now since he's landing on the ground now we've got to use the different sprite so we have to swap symbol that may be a new concept I'm not sure if I introduced that previously anyway what you have to do is just uh, select uh, create a new keyframe just right click on your graphic and then go down to swap symbol in that case just select uh, the one sprite that you want to replace it with sonic landing in this case and okay a little mistake I've got to make sure that the graphic in this case is a single frame so go here and single frame and I've got to select the first frame so there we go this is the sprite where Sonic is landing. Now I'm turning on onion skin just to make sure that I'm aligning everything correctly. Let's zoom in. So I gotta right, I gotta move him up a little I gotta move him up a little bit. Maybe a little bit to the left. That's what I gotta do. Sometimes you just gotta adjust uh, the position of your of your graphics. That's what you gotta do. And I think it looks okay. Does it look okay? Yep, it looks okay for now. Now you could just go ahead and play out the rest of the animation. So for that I'm just gonna add uh, three keyframes I believe. Uh, yeah so we've got these and for this keyframe the second one and then the third frame and then the last frame. And that's about it. You could actually just call it a day and there we go. That's the animation. That's the landing animation. But I want to teach you something. So. What you can do to make it look smoother is actually do a little bit of resizing. Now it's a very common technique among spread animators. It's nothing new. But for those who don't know, I will just show it off. You gotta make sure you're using your free transform tool. So you're going to select your character. And by clicking on one of those black squares, you can freely transform your graphic. Uh, according to this white dot. So pay attention to the position of that white dot. If you change it to position, the uh, free transformation will occur differently, uh, either vertically or horizontally. It all depends on the position of that white point. So if I, see if I place it right here, you're going to see that uh, it's going to stretch differently. So pay attention to that point. Knowing all this, what is resizing useful for? Well, I'm going to show you. Let me just zoom in a little bit. I'm just going to put in here. 1600% oh that's very close so just in theory whenever you are you have an object that it's uh, has a certain momentum and it comes to a stop like for instance in this case Sonic is landing on the ground he still has momentum so he's going to be in real life let's let's imagine in real life he would be squished a little bit when he lands 
and then you will recover his original form, his original shape. Well, that's what you gotta try to recreate in animation. In sprite animating, you can use resizing for that. So, here's, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna convert these few frames into keyframes. And I'm going to go on, on to the first keyframe and I'm gonna make sure that the white dot is positioned on his feet, more or less like right around here. And I'm gonna resize him just a little bit. I'm gonna make him a little bit squished down like this, just a little bit. Then I go to the next keyframe, again make sure I have the white dot right here and I'm just gonna squish him just a little bit more and I'm gonna stretch him out horizontally, horizontally, just a little bit. And on, on the next keyframe he's going to start to recover his original shape, so I'm just gonna squish him one more time. Oh, sorry, I forgot the white dot. Right, right here. Squish him a little bit. There we go. And on the last frame he has his original form, so... When you see the animation you will see that he lands, but when he lands he's squished a little bit, just a little bit. And that creates the, let's say, the illusion, like, it makes the landing animation look a little bit more realistic, a little bit smoother. And that's the idea behind using resizing uh, whenever you're, your, your, you're animating movement. It makes it look like it was in real life, which is not, which is not the case, but still, it, it looks better in my opinion. And here's the full animation. Boom, here we go. So it looks better than before, it looks a little bit smoother, and there's so many ways you can make this resizing. You can make it much more detailed or you can make it very short. It's really up to you. It really depends on the style of the animator. And that's the first thing I wanted to show you to make look, to make your, your movements look a little bit better. The second thing deals more with momentum and horizontal movement. So let's just take the same kind of animation where Sonic is landing on the ground, but he's got some forward momentum. All right, let me just animate that quickly. Okay, that took longer than expected. So let's just go ahead and uh, add the landing sprite. So I'm just gonna, first off, uh, what I did, I created a motion tween inside of a motion tween. So what I gotta do, I just gotta break down this sprite again to obtain the original graphic. So now I can swap symbol without having any position resizing problem. So let's just go ahead, swap the symbol like before. Sonic landing, let's just zoom in a little bit. Uh, make sure that it's a single frame, use onion skin, make sure to position it correctly, I think this is about right. And I'm gonna play out the rest of the animation. But let me just say this. Now let's forget about the resizing for a moment, right? Let's just say we don't care about resizing, alright? This would still look stiff, but in another, another way. It looks kind of stiff, because Sonic has a full... Not only does he have a downward momentum, which is him landing, but he's also got a forward momentum. He's, he's moving forward at the same time. So, having him land on one spot and not move at all is kind of weird. It makes him look very stiff. So that's where I have to use sliding, and again, like resizing, it's nothing uncommon, it's nothing new. I'm just gonna show you how to make that. It's quite easy, actually. Let's just remove those subsequent frames, we're gonna add them later. And here's what you gotta do. I'm just gonna zoom in again, very close, there we go. So since he, since he has a little bit of mo forward momentum, when he lands, he's going to slide a little bit, like this. Alright, so we're gonna just create a motion tween. And in this case, I rec recommend you don't use classic tween, but you use the more, the different uh, motion tween. So we're just gonna create a empty or a blank keyframe, create motion tween, and just move him a little bit forward. 
Just a little bit, but not too much. Make sure you don't do it too much, otherwise it looks even weirder. So, it kind of slides off. Now, that's a, it looks unrealist, un, it doesn't look natural, right? So what you gotta do is just add ease, 100 e I usually have 100 ease for that kind of thing. So it moves just a little bit. Now, maybe I should make it a little bit longer. There we go. So that looks better in my opinion. Then, and here comes the advantage of this kind of motion tree. You're just gonna convert it to frame by frame animation. Uh, you can, in this case, you can put it back like this and then delete the layer that I was just created. That's what I do. And now, since you have a frame by frame animation, you can go ahead and for each frame do a little bit of resizing. So let me just do that quickly. And that's it for the movement. So not only is Sonic moving a little bit forward, he's keeping his momentum just a little bit, but he's also being resized, he's squished a little bit when he lands. So we kind of combined both, both effects. And just to finish, I will add those subsequent frames that I uh, that I deleted before. Let me just quickly do that to be finished. There we go. Number two and number three and the last one, number four. And let's look at the whole thing from the start. Uh, maybe a little, not too far. There we go. So Sonic jump. There we go. And. That's how, that's how you do it. And with that being said, the video is finished. So in this part of the tutorial, I was more or less trying to show you that you can actually use physics uh, to make to make animation look a little bit smoother. Uh, like the fact that when you're landing, you're being squished a little bit, or when you're moving forward, you kind of keep your momentum even if you come to a stop. So you got to slide. So that's just sort of like using physics to make sprite animating. It's kind of funny and it. I think it I could go more into detail and I think there are even more things that I don't even know about that you can use and try out for yourself but that was just the general gist that I hope you enjoyed and I hope I can release the next tutorial video maybe in two months uh, we'll see I'm kind of being kind of busy right now job hunting is still job hunting but uh, I hope this was helpful so until the next video take care have fun ciao